Hey designers, today I wanna to walk you through the build process that I went through to make my new online store for selling fonts. Webflow just recently, like I think within the last couple of months, introduced a digital download option as part of their e-commerce platform. So that's what I've used for my store. So if you've been looking to use Webflow e-commerce to sell some digital products and you wanna get like an inside scoop on how to go about building out a sales page, building out your store, then you're in the right place. Right now I do just have the one font up for sale, but I have designed and built the store to be future-proof so that I can add new fonts in the future. You can check out my current font grayscale at charliemarie.store. And this video is actually very fittingly sponsored by Dot Store Domains. I'm a big fan of TLDs like this, and I think that Dot Store is a great choice for an online store domain, either as well as or instead of a .com. Because firstly, there's going to be a lot more options available. So if your brand name, the ideal one you want to use for your store, isn't available as a .com, it's much more likely to be open and ready for you to use as a dot .store. And secondly, it tells you what it is right there in the name. When someone clicks on a dot .store link, they know they're heading to your online store. It's short, it's easy to remember. Now, because my online store is part of my like wider personal website, I have my dot .store domain set up as a redirect to the store section, just because it's a much easier link to share. So huge thank you to dot .store for partnering with me on this video. And with all that said, let's get into it and let me show you the build of my store. Let me start by just showing you the page first off, and then I'll highlight a few different little things about the build of it. So this is my sales page for Grayscale. And there's this buy now button at the top that you can click and it'll scroll you right down to like the licensing section. Um, you know, just if someone is convinced straight away and they wanna buy it, I didn't wanna get in their way at all. So I have this little intro here that talks a bit about the font. And then I have my two different versions. So with my font, I sell a standard license and extended license. I talked about this more in the video that I did about the font making process. So I'll link to that on a card. You can go check it out if you so choose. But yeah, I have these um, two blocks here that show the differences between them with this checklist. So you're clear on what extra value you're getting basically with the extended license. Um, and that's shown also in the image here. You can see that with the extended license, you're gonna get more stuff as well as the opportunity to use it for business and um, commercial web use. And then I have my little price in these flags up here, which I think just looked really cute. Here's where you choose the license just from this drop down. So if I click this, then this price will change out as well. Um, I have these images down here just showing some more examples of the font in use, and these are all a light box. So I can click on this and um, it'll display larger so you can get a better look. And then for the footer, I just used my regular footer that I have all across my website. If you haven't used Webflow e-commerce before, then I will just quickly say that one of the things that I love about it personally and why I like using it is that every step of the process is customizable and you can pick absolutely everything about the design. You know, I feel like a lot of Shopify stores, especially the checkout flow, like looks exactly the same, right? Like you will have seen it before on other, other shops. So yeah, I think it's really cool with Webflow e-commerce that you can completely customize the design of all of that, just like you do every other page on your Webflow site. So on my checkout form, I have this um, little thing sticking at the side here as you scroll down. And I didn't actually change the design of the checkout and the confirmation page from my previous online store. I should have said that at the start, that I used to have uh, a store where I sold prints. I closed that down because I just preferred to be dealing with digital products now in terms of logistics and shipping and all that, you know. So anyway, a lot of the design, um, especially like this menu up the top already existed uh, from that previous version of the store and this checkout did as well. So I'll focus most of my time in this video talking about this sales page because that's new and I'll leave a link to another video where you can watch specifically about the checkout process because I did a whole series about the build of my last store using Webflow e-commerce. All right, so I wanna start here by showing you the custom fields that I have set up for um, my online store. The e-commerce system works just like their CMS. You can create as many different fields as you want to fully customize it. And then each product page is like, you know, a CMS item page. Let me walk you through it. So here in e-commerce, I have my products. Let me click on the settings here. So there's a lot of fields that it comes with, clearly like, you know, for shipping inventory, all of the important stuff that you need for an online store. Um, but then we have my custom fields that I've set up down here. And like I said, a lot of this setup I did with the future in mind, thinking that in the future I wanna sell more fonts, maybe even more different types of digital products as well. So um, this is why I've got these fields set up this way. 
So I have my category here where I'll be able to pick if it's a font or if it's you know something else in the future. A description, the font name image. Unfortunately, in the Webflow CMS, you can't yet um, select a font in the CMS, if that makes sense. You can add colors in the CMS to use on each product page, but not fonts. So if I wanted to have the name of the font typed in the font on the product page, I needed to use an image of it instead of actually typing the font. I don't know. I hope that's something that maybe will come to Webflow in the future because it'd be really cool to just have the web font on the page, you know. Um, I've got my background image and then I've got the image for each of my licenses, the standard license, the extended license. There's always going to be a bonus thing with an extended license. I decided that's the thing I want to do. So uh, that's there. And then we have the price for both my demo images, which are the ones that you saw in the light box at the bottom. So even though I'm selling two different versions of my font, it is just one product in my store. It is just grayscale. And then the different versions of the font come in as variants of a product. And this part of an e-commerce tool is usually used to sell different sizes or different colors or something. But in my case, I'm using it to sell different licenses. And as you can see here, I can choose what I call these variants. So I have it set up to say license. Uh, in here in the variants is where you tell it that it is a digital product. So I have this includes download here, and then uh, I have my file name and the file URL. And this is how the delivery happens. You're setting it all up right here in the product itself. You also add an image to each variant, which you can see here. This isn't actually used anywhere on my sales page though. This just comes into play on the checkout page, you know, on the little block you saw at the side. Um, I did a bit of a hack to have both versions of my product displaying because that is not something that happens by default. So let me show you how I do that. Um, usually what happens in Webflow is um, you just have like one product image and when you select one of the variants, the, the product image will swap out for the variant you picked. But I wanted people to be able to easily directly compare the two different versions of my font to decide which one they wanted. Um, so let's come into how I've set up my page. So I have my navigation at the top here, like I said, that I built in my last online store. So that is a symbol, which means that if I make a change to it, it'll update everywhere that's used across the site. This is where I have my background image comes from the image field. So I'm always gonna be able to pick a different image to use for the font. Like I want each font to kind of have its own identity and its own feel. And for this one, I went for sort of like concert vibe, I guess. Like I said, I'm future proofing this for my future fonts where I'm gonna be able to swap that out and give them all their own identity and look and feel. Then I've got my image. And again, this is getting the image from products. It's selecting the font name image. And I also made it get the alt text from um, the description as well. So that if the image doesn't load or if someone is using a screen reader, uh, it'll say to them a handmade sans serif font. This buy now button, just to show you how I got it to scroll down the page if you wanted to do that too. So it's using this little bit here that links to a page section, which links to add to cart. You can add an ID to any block in Webflow up in this part up here. And then that's what will show up in the list of page sections to link to. So that's what my button links to. And it just automatically makes it scroll like smoothly down as well, not just jump to it, which I really like. It's a nice little Webflow feature. A lot of these classes I have set up like my container and this gray body and stuff like that just comes from the rest of my website because like I said, my store is part of that. Um, I have a full series that this video will be a part of on the build of my website. So again, I'll link to a playlist on that if you wanna see some details on other parts. But I use CSS Grid for this whole block. I just thought it'd be handy especially when it came to shrinking things. So this is a, just a quick look at how it behaves on smaller devices. So then this is taking up the full thing. For as long as possible, I kept them side by side to make it easier for people to compare directly. Let me show you just a quick overview of the setup of these blocks here. So um, I called this a license card and, and you know gave it a style and then applied the exact same thing to the other one. These images are actually using the light box feature so that when I'm on the page, you could actually click on this image as well and see it larger. It might not be extremely obvious, but the little hand shows up when you hover on it. So let me open up the settings here and I'll just show you um, how you get that. So I was getting the media for the light box from the standard license image. And then obviously this one is coming from the extended license image. So this box is relative and this price flag is absolute so that it always sits like in that position up the top, um, no matter you know how much the box shrinks. It always sits that far from the side. I did it as a background image, did I? Let me scroll down. Yeah, 
I've got the SVG as a background image and then the price come, is on top and that fetches from the standard license price field. And this is why I did have to set up those custom fields for the prices, even though you put the prices in again when you're setting up the variance. It's so that I could bring them out and have them both displaying on the page at the same time. I hope that's making sense. So these prices here are coming from the custom fields that I set up because I knew I wanted to display them both on the page at the same time. This one comes from the variant itself. So when I change the drop down, it changes the price. So it's on me to make sure that I put the same number into these custom fields as I do when it's setting up the variant. But you know, that's a pretty easy thing to make sure I've done right. So yeah, that means this block here is my add to cart element, which you get from the uh, Webflow, like, you know, add panel that I just styled up to match how I want. I put all my own classes onto my buttons to get them to do what I want and get them to match the rest of my site. Same with styling all the text. You can completely customize the way all of this looks. These images down here are also light boxes. Um, but first I put in a collection list. So um, to do that, I'm using this block here. So it's fetching this list of items from the demo images um, that I made as a custom field, remember, in my product. So within each specific thing of the uh, collection list, that's when I dropped in a light box um, and made it connect to the demo images for getting its media. And yeah, that means that when you click on it, it appears nice and large on the screen. And I just had these outside of any sort of container so that they're going to span the whole width of the screen. So yeah, that's a look at this sales page, which is actually like the extent of my online store really at the moment. But when I have more fonts, I'm gonna wanna obviously make a storefront page where, that lists all of the fonts on it. And the thing with Workflow e-commerce is it doesn't come with a pre-made template for that, right? Because the point is that you can do it all yourself. You can like get templates from the Workflow site, but it's not gonna be a default that you get in your site. So when I come to do that, um, I'm gonna add, a new page. Let me just add a one now for an example to show you. And what I'll be doing is dragging in a collection list and I'll be getting that list of products from the e-commerce thing. Um, and then right now it's obviously only showing me grayscale. When I have multiple, it would show all those products. I went into this in much more detail in my previous e-commerce store series. So I will leave a link to that for you to go check it out. But my point is that um, physical products, digital products, um, selling them on Webflow, making a store for them is very, very similar. The main change comes in in the product itself where you just check that the variant includes um, a download. Yeah. And then the other thing to be aware of is on the order confirmation page, you're going to want to make sure you add in this downloads block somewhere on the page so that um, as soon as someone has paid and they reach this page, they can access the file that they just purchased. So this is what I have here, this um, in my design for my order confirmation page, it just appears at the side right above the items in the order and they can download it right there. So yeah, this is a little, a little element that you need to drag in and add onto your page and then style it up however you want. All of these blocks come in like with some sort of pre-styling and I didn't veer much from them because I was like, yeah, kind of like it how it is. But yeah, you can then move everything around within these blocks if you want to. If you do, for some reason, want to watch me build out the whole thing, I am gonna upload a separate video that's like a speed build of the design and build. You obviously get less details on that because I'm just gonna be speeding through it and doing it all. But you can watch that if you want and um, get a feel for my process. This store is part of my personal site. It's not a site on its own. So I did set up a dot store domain as a redirect to the store section so that it have something shorter, more memorable to share. Let me just quickly show you how I did that. And so I come into my domain and I go to my domain forwarding settings. And then in here, as you can see right now, I'll just open this up and show you. I have the domain pointing directly to the product page because this is currently the only thing in my store. So I might as well link right to it, you know, but it's going to be really easy to swap this out in the future when I do have like a proper storefront on my website. Um, I can just swap out the link in here and then charliemarie.store will point to that instead. Very handy and obviously just a lot nicer to link to, to link to this rather than this big long URL, you know. So there we go. I hope you found it useful to hear about the different design decisions and, you know, ways I'm using the Webflow CMS to sell a digital product. 
can go check it out for yourself at charliemarie.store. I also hope that it was useful for you to hear about why I'm using this domain and might help you make a decision of what to use yourself for your own store. Like I said, you could actually have this domain be your Webflow store and like host the store directly on this domain or use it as a redirect like I have. I think as a redirect, it's really helpful, especially if you're not using like a custom built site, using something like Teespring or Big Cartel or something, you get a URL that's really long and unbranded. Um, using a dot store domain could help you brand that up. So yeah, I hope that's useful. The dot store team have actually very kindly given me a discount code that I can share with you as well. So if you wanna get your own domain for just $1.99, then you can use the code CMYT on get.store slash start your business. That'll be linked in the description. Um, that's a saving of like $27, I think. So a very reasonably priced domain. Thanks for watching everyone. If you've got any questions about anything I covered in this video, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll get back to you down there and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.